It's time to taste the Roy Boss Smead. That's how everybody's been telling me to say it. It sounds weird to me, but I get it. It's okay. I'm not trying to make fun of how people say it. I have always said it Rui Boss, and many people told me I'm right. Many people told me I'm wrong. Whatever. We made mead from this stuff. <laughs> and now we're going to find out how it tastes. Yeah, it's about three and a half months old. And it ended weird, okay? Meaning it ended at like 1.054 or something very high for gravity. Now I know some people are out there going, oh, how can you drink that? Well, you know what? You'd be surprised. Various brews at various different gravities actually taste differently. Tea has a lot of astringency to it and a lot of bitterness to it on its own. So it can handle more sweetness than usual. Am I saying that this isn't sweet? Oh, heck no. This is this is a sweet meat. But if you think about cooking, for example, and the different flavor profiles, if you're going for something a little more spicy, then you might, if you want to have a bounce, bounce flavor, you might have to up the sweetness of that to mm -hmm. make it taste relatively equal in dignity. Whereas if the spice was missing, it would be way too much too sweet with that much of the sweetness. So estrogency tannins all those all things. about the balance yeah yeah and that's the thing it is all about the balance one thing goes up another thing has to go up to balance that out like she said if the other stuff wasn't there it'd be way too sweet first color it's clear this is still cold yep we haven't started leaving them out yet to get warm but anyway this is cold um the color is really pretty it looks like tea it really does look like Roy Boss. So it's got that Roy Boss that tea. golden brownish reddish, reddish combo. Yeah, it's that's a really pretty color. Very appealing. Looks like a really deep mead color. So when I smell it, I get those tea notes, but then I get almost like a a boche note. You said that before that you get like a caramelized. And I wonder if maybe it's this the roast of the tea? Uh, could be. I mean, it's related to the honey bush, which is like right. a honey flavored, but they're all kind of caramely. I get like a honey caramely thing off of rooibos tea to begin with. But I'm, I'm getting a separate note that to me smells cooked. Okay. I, I, I can kind of see what you're saying. I'm, I'm getting almost a citrusy and then there's a almost lemony yeah. citrus note. And honey. Definitely honey. Yeah. Time for the short sip. It's very much like rooibos tea. Now, honey. the short sip is just intended to acclimate your palate to primarily mm. the alcohol. I need another beverage. short sip. But that short sip for me was surprisingly complex. So I was yeah. like, whoa, it's like There's a party a in my mouth. Um, so this is a 7.8% ABV. So it really isn't it's like a inc high beer. incredibly high at all. Um, Don't taste alcohol. All right. So I'm going to take a long sip now. Long sip. I'm going to put this in more of the dessert category, like something to drink with dessert. Though I could drink this with food, and I could put this in a mug and drink it. I know I could. The sweetness um, from the honey is definitely there, but there is a lot more going on than that that makes my, my assessment of it say that it isn't too sweet. It's not syrupy. It's, no. it's not, it's not like, you know, that, that word cloying, let me explain what that means. It means when you taste it, you're like, it feels like literally it's sticky in your mouth. This is not, I mean, you can see it's very liquid. It's not syrupy at all. It doesn't taste syrupy. It's sweet. If you do not like sweet mead, this is going to be a little too sweet. for yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the upper end of sweetness for me. How's that sound? The more I drink it, the more I'm getting the sweetness, but my initial taste, uh, it wasn't overpoweringly sweet to me. I don't find it overpoweringly sweet at all. I'm actually enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, flavors, though. As it enters my mouth, 
Like right off the bat on entrance, I am getting here. Have some more. Right off the bat, I am getting the sweetness of the honey, and I get the honey character almost like there's a candy bit of honey. I get that kind of impactful honey flavor right away. And then the astringency and the slight bitterness of the tea comes through yeah. and balances that out. So it's sweet, but then it comes right back. Yeah. It's the, a really the cool The initial thing. for me is definitely a back and forth on sweet. Mm -hmm. And then the tannic cleansing notes of the tea itself. Right. Kind of bouncing back and forth. So I don't get an overly powering note of one or the other it's just it just kind of right. ping pongs back and forth between those two notes up front now i'd like to say something when i drink rooibos tea i have to put sugar or honey in it i don't like it without those things however with those things it's one of my favorite teas figure that one out but what i get on the second half like in the middle is that rooibos flavor without the sugar or honey in there and that i think because the honey character is still sort of carrying through, it's almost like that starts to come back. So it's, like she said, it's almost a battle between those two flavors. Not to say they're not harmonious together, because they're very harmonious. But it goes from this honey sweet to the rooibos, and then off on the back end. I'm really not getting the honey bitterness that I usually get from mead. That's no. probably a result of the lower alcohol. Yeah. Um, my My brain is having... A jolly good time today apparently because I started off with those ping-ponging analogies and when I continued to take another sip and, and investigate what the further path my experience was with it I started to um, use a pinball machine as my analogy so the initial is the ping, 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 and then it just kind of swirls around going through the whole track so we have the, the sweetness and the, the tea essence, and then it swoops around to like citrus notes and then back to tea and then back to sweet. And it's it's a ping pong roller coaster. I see that. <laughs> sort of, I think. Um, what I get is something a little bit unusual. Like I say, as it enters, it's, it's that honey sweetness. Then I get the tea. But where I get it is what's unusual. Usually I taste things... In the lower part of my mouth this one i'm getting in the roof of my mouth i don't know if that's like the accurate way to say it but that's where it feels like i'm tasting it i know i'm weird what can i say it's interesting that he mentioned where the sensations yeah. were activating in his it's mouth in the roof of my mouth because i know sweetness is the i believe the tip of your tongue oh, I, I thought it was all over I, that whole diagram thing from when we were kids, that's uh, all bull. Okay, whatever. They're everywhere in your tongue. When I i get the first, you know, obviously any, everywhere in my mouth, but then it seems to be concentrated more towards the middle to back middle of my tongue, and I get almost a fullness sensation mm -hmm. uh, because it's activating all those nerve endings in that area of my mouth. Or you were talking about more on the roof of your mouth. Yeah, and then even towards the back of my tongue and back, like, almost into my throat on the finish. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely a farther back on the palate, I guess would be the proper yeah. term, than the forward. Can you tell we don't like this one at all? <laughs> we actually inadvertently, on accident, on purpose, put two of these in our refrigerator. So we're like, oh yeah, we'll just finish this one up because we have a full yeah, this one in wasn't there the ready taster. to go. So we shared this with my family over Thanksgiving holidays. It was pretty popular. And it was pretty popular. But they left that much in a bottle. Yeah. So, you know. We did bring over like six bottles of stuff in their defense. So, you know, it's okay. I really like this. I find this to be what a lot of people might think of as mead when they think of mead it's got a fullness and a richness it's sweet it's very pleasant it's easy to drink it's it's not overly aggressive it you know there's nothing really unpleasant about this like i say if you don't like sweet mead or wine this might be a little too much for you there's but it might not there's something that I tend to do when I'm not feeling well, and that's I drink a copious amount of tea yeah. because tea is like my happy place. So because this isn't reading 
alcoholic so much, but it's definitely reading tea and it's definitely reading honey. I'm sort of getting the sensation now in my stomach as I continue to drink, because Brian keeps continuing to pour, of that medicinal quality. warming medicinal yeah. quality. Not the warming quality you get from alcohol, but the warming medicinal quality you get from a honey-infused beverage, be oh, hot okay. water with honey mm -hmm. and lemon or tea with honey or, or whatever. I, I just feel very comfortable. <laughs> well, this would technically be a methaglin, I guess, wouldn't it? Tea I, isn't I, really an herb or a spice, but it's sort of more an herb than anything. So yeah. I would imagine this would be a, a methaglin. So it's if, a tea glen. If, if that's the case, then it makes sense. Makes sense to be on the medicinal side of things. Um, but as far as cooking with it, drinking it with food, or drinking in a mug, I can do all three. I can see this going into many things, actually, because even though it's got a tea flavor, it's neutral enough. I think that it can go with a lot of things. Yeah, but like, my brain is being really weird today. I hate oatmeal. I absolutely despise oatmeal. And for some reason, when we were thinking just now about what to put, I was like, this would be nice in oatmeal. Yeah, it would. Who, it, who am you know, I? And it what almost, to Derica? almost, <laughs> like, if you think really hard in a vague way, has a maple syrup type quality to yes, it. That's yes. That's where she's going with yeah. that. As soon as she said that, I was like, oh, I see what she's saying. It's funny how you can almost make another person understand or, or taste or, or smell the same thing when you describe it. Yeah, I kind of get that. And that's why I think this can work for a lot of things. And for that initial thought of oatmeal and then me questioning my, my own personal reality, I went to something more comforting uh -oh. and that was cookies and breads. Yeah. And how could this be used like to flavor an icing maybe or like yeah. infused in cream cheese for a nice spread or just paired with cookies and mm. breads i could put in this glass, in you know? in a lot of sauces this would work really well the sweetness would help carry into the sauces without overwhelming flavors because it's a strong flavor but it's not it's not an overwhelming flavor that's the interesting thing yeah it's it has a, a strength and a complexity without being aggressive. It's just really nice, okay? <laughs> I mean it's it is. It's just really it's good. And then thinking on the maple syrup and and even maybe a brown sugar kind of yeah, a little caramel bit. note. Then I was wondering, ooh, could you use this to marinate meats or maybe add to a barbecue sauce or something but you know am i being crazy now probably i thought about oatmeal so this could work really well in a barbecue sauce i think so okay so i'm not crazy no i don't think you're crazy at all um as far as drinking this with food i could drink this with almost any meal i i think i could i could do this with like a rich fatty food all the way to like a, a more of an oil-based sauce on pasta or even like some of the more like lemon styled yeah, sauces, yeah. things like that, lemon wine sauces. This just works with a variety of things because the sweetness works in this. And it, I know that sounds strange, but the sweetness really does work in this. I'm trying to imagine what it would be like less sweet and I'm- It'd be less pleasant. I'm thinking I wouldn't like it as much. Yeah. And that isn't, normally where I go. Normally I'm like, oh, I really like it, but it could just be a little bit less sweet. Just a right. little bit less sweet. This one, I'm thinking if I cut, I go a few points, but if that's I cut it. down those honey notes, would the other notes become aggressive where I said, this isn't aggressive mm -hmm. and take away from the overall enjoyment of the beverage. And that's really interesting to me because the end product was not what we were going for. We didn't no. intend it to stop. No. this low we intended for it to ferment out more but there's reasons for that yeah and one of them is someone actually told me recently that specifically saccharomyces cerevisiae is inhibited by hot ruibos tea now i don't know how that transfers to cold or just the raw tea but it must have some effect if it does it when it's been brewed so i'm gonna say that's probably why and a lot of people even told me oh yeah i've never gotten it to go past eight percent and where are we seven point eight percent so i actually like that it almost gives a limit so if i was to do this again i might try it with a little less honey just to see if i still like it or not but i'm tempted to do it the same way because this just yeah, came out really, really good nice. i could go a little less now, something I want to um, 
Oh, something I want to talk about is giving that final gravity um, when we do a tasting. Somebody asked me if we would do that, and only one person asked, but I thought, you know, that's not a bad idea. But let me put it into perspective for you, too. We kind of touched excuse me, we kind of touched on it earlier, that it's relative, not absolute. In other words, if this was 1.020 versus 1.54, that doesn't necessarily mean that the 1.054 is sweeter than the 1.020 on your palate. It does mean there's more sugar in the beverage, but different beverages will react very differently. A traditional like just a straight up mead at 1.020 will probably taste about as sweet as this does at 1.054. Now, we both know that we both, in general, tend to like sweeter beverages, but we have been pleasantly surprised in tasting some of our fruited meads and even some of our fruited wines, not just mm -hmm. pure grape, um, that came out at a lower final gravity reading and we're like oh that's kind of dry we might not like this and then, and then we sampled it and it was like oh this is lovely and crisp and refreshing because those fruity notes can sometimes make trick your brain mm -hmm. into making it feel like it tastes sweeter than what it actually is so it didn't need all those additional sugars to get the same pleasing effect to our personal palate tastes now something else that can be huge when it comes to this is what you've eaten that day, the mood you're in, everything. Because there, there are a few meats that I have that are my absolute favorites, like the spice methylene. Love that. However, some days I go, nope, not working for me today. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in what you ate and how you feel that day, what your mood is, things like that. They all affect your taste receptors because think about it. Taste is your brain. Your brain interpreting what it's, what it's in what it's taking in and putting it back to memories and things like that. So if you had a rough day, sometimes that thing, that beverage will go, oh, this is just so beautiful and so amazing. Other days you'd be like, nope, this just reminds me of all the stuff that went wrong today and it's not working. And that's, that's the truth. That's pretty much how it works. But um, yeah, all three. I could totally put this in a mug and sit by the TV and drink this all night long. This, this is cool. I, I like it. I don't know that I'd like it warm. I'm glad we didn't do this one because I don't think I would like it as much. I yeah, think it needs to be cold. I I was thinking about that, and I'm glad you brought that up. Is is There's been a couple of that we've tasted that I'm like, oh, I wonder what this would be like warm. And I thought about that for this because it is a tea and it was reminding me of hot tea with honey. It needs to be iced. But <laughs> Iced tea. I feel like if it was warm, it would either mute some of the stuff somehow or turn up things that I really didn't want turned up. I think the bitterness would come through more. And so we need it sweeter. Yeah. So it's not sweet enough. See that? See how that works? So I'm going to agree with Brian on this one that I think chilled is the way to go for this. Yeah. I I, I totally agree on that. Um okay. You know what time it is? It's time for numbers. Time for numbers. Derek is not a fan of the numbers. I don't like numbers. Now, the way we score is this. If we give it a one, that means it's pretty much undrinkable. It might even be dangerous, and you wouldn't give it to your worst enemy. A 10 literally means there's no way to improve this. Like, nothing we could do would make this better. We've only given one of those, and... It was to me, it was the Spice Methaglin. And we gave it because that one had a lot going on, and I don't really think we could improve that one. I think other things might make it less than it was. So, with that in mind, you ready? Yes. One, two, three, seven Eight. and a half. That is a very respectable score, okay? I just want to make that clear. Pretty much for me, if I give a five, that means it's good. I enjoy it, and I would drink it. Okay, that, that's what that means. Anything below a five, it starts to have negative impact. A five just means, yeah, I enjoy it. It's good. For Derek to give an eight, that's pretty high. That, that means she really likes it. I went seven and a half. I was debating between seven and a half and eight. And my reasoning is, I think the stereotype of the 1.054 is bothering me too much. <laughs> I just, I feel like... It didn't ferment fully enough, so I kind of have to take it down for that, even though it stopped where it should stop and it, you know, natural and all that. I feel like that's not where I wanted it to go, so I think I can do better. 
if that makes sense. And that, that's about it. I, but I like this. I don't love this is basically where I'm at. I expected more from the rooibos. That's that's the gist. Don't take it wrong. Seven and a half is still really good. And I plan on drinking all of these. I mean, yes. we're sitting here drinking it. Yes, yes. But um, I got to get critical and tough on my score. And that's why I gave it an eight. I knocked it down from a 9.5 because it made me think of oatmeal. And that disturbs me on levels <laughs> that I just can't explain on this video. I like oatmeal. Um, But I am enjoying it. So I had to, to bump it up there. But I feel like there is room for improvement. Sure. However, I cannot pinpoint which direction I would go to improve this. Now, the score does not mean you have to know how we would improve it. It just means you see that there's room for improvement. And that's pretty much where I'm at. I don't know exactly what I would do to make it better, but it kind of bothers me that it didn't come out the way I intended. So for me, that means a lower score. Like I say, I just expected more from Rubos. I expected a, a different flavor profile, maybe, maybe a stronger flavor. I, I, I can't really explain it. Lots of times when we're exploring different things and turning different ingredients into the mead direction, we revert back to what is familiar. Mm -hmm. And for us in the world of Rubos, one of Brian's favorite blends of the tea is with pear. Yes. So that makes my mind go, oh, well, if we added some fruity pear notes to this, yeah. we could cut back on the sugars, retain mm -hmm. the essence of sweetness with that additional fruity pop. See, this is why I married her. She's so smart. Maybe that would work. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh. And I didn't really consider it that way, that how to improve rooibos mead would be to make it a rooibos mellow mel mead. But I think she's onto something. I do believe that adding pear to this would drastically increase the sweetness while still enhancing that rooibos flavor. She's onto something. We might have to work on that. But anyway, if you like this video, look up! There's more! You should go watch that too.